What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Have some interesting topics to go over today, including Animal Crossing getting apparently loot boxes, which I think threw a lot of people off, but there is a bit of overreaction with this. I figured we'd go through it a bit, see kind of uh, what we can what we can take from it here. E3 plans are getting thrown all over the place. We have Xbox, Ubisoft, and now there is even a rumor going around about Battlefield V or Battlefield V entering the Battle Royale craze. That just seems to be taking everything over. Also, before we start, Jason Schreier did tweet out uh, yesterday that he can kind of confirm the exact same things that others are hearing about Black Ops 4 not having a campaign and trying to add in a Battle Royale mode. So it sounds like it's going to be a multiplayer only affair with Black Ops 4. We're going to kind of go over Battlefield's reaction because believe it or not, developers are having their own reactions to hearing about this. And it sounds like... Sounds like Battlefield is, is pretty, they're pretty happy about their chances this year. So let's get into it, guys. So Animal Crossing Pocket Camp has been out for a few months now on cell phones, mobile phones, iOS, Android, and everything. And it is a free-to-play game. It's a game you download, and you can play Animal Crossing directly on your phone. It seems like pretty much a match made in heaven there, right? You can have Animal Crossing on your phone pretty much always with you. It's, it's a fun game that a lot of people enjoy, kind of like a Sims-based style game, right? And now they've been missing their sales targets. It hasn't done well technically in terms of money. So you kind of conform and you add the one thing that pretty much all cell phone games that are free to play tend to have. And that's loot boxes, at least to an extent. They're really just gotcha me mechanisms where they kind of do random draws like loot boxes that can or can't give you what you want. And a lot of times they give you duplicates. Well, it looks like Animal Crossing is doing just that. Two days ago, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp added in loot boxes that they call fortune cookies. You can purchase these with premium currency, of course. You gotta use the premium currency. And uh, as you go through it, you acquire stamps from premium cookies, 10 of which are required for certain items. And of course, you can get duplicates, like I said, of the gear that you already have. Now, what is the point of these? Well, it's to conform and essentially get more money. Gotcha systems are proven money makers, and honestly, the cell phone audience, they don't care. It's, it's pretty much commonplace now to get a game for free and then have to deal with gambling mechanics, things like that, that really get more and more money out of the whales that play the games. Now, people seem really upset about this, which was a little odd to me when I started seeing that kind of kind of really across the internet where people were speaking out, they weren't happy, but then there's Probably also people who play Fire Emblem Heroes, which had loot boxes from the start. They were just disguised better than what Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is doing with their fortune cookies because it basically had summon events. When you summon a character, it is a random draw that is doing pretty much the exact same thing here as the fortune cookies, and you're almost always guaranteed to get duplicates and stuff you don't want. Trust me, I've been there with some of these different games on mobile phones. You can grind away and get enough currency to then really buy another summon, but more times than not, you're going to get something you don't want it really trying to... You're just trying for that awesome character, that awesome card in, like, the different card games. And it's been around for a while, so I don't really know why people are all of a sudden up in arms. Maybe it's because Animal Crossing is a well-known Nintendo IP, and that's why they're not happy to see loot boxes or fortune cookies, in this case, uh, enter. But here's the thing. Fire Emblem is making money. Animal Crossing, Mario Run, it's, it's really not. Uh, Fire Emblem has been making great, great money, <laughs> really, uh, in the in the Japanese audience, and it really hasn't affected how we view Fire Emblem, has it? So I'm not really sure why this is affecting how people see Animal Crossing. Will Animal Crossing Switch have loot boxes that you have to pay with real money? Of course not. No, come on. <laughs> come on. Nintendo actually sees that, from what I can tell, as diminishing their IP's value by really taking away from... Really, the game that they have spent a lot of time in development making. They don't have to resort to loot boxes because their games sell on their platform. Stuff like Animal Crossing, stuff like the new Fire Emblem, even though their mobile counterparts have these microtransactions, these loot boxes, their console versions, they won't. Next up, we have some dates and times and everything, and for some of them, including Microsoft, actual event information leading up to E3. We're now less than two months away from E3, so we were going to start getting dates and times and stuff from all the different companies. Ubisoft tweeted out, save the date, Ubi E3 is coming, join us 
on June 11th from 1 p.m. Pacific time. More to come. Stay tuned. So there we go. Ubisoft's jumping right in there on Monday in the afternoon, 1 p.m. Pacific time. So 4 p.m. Eastern my time. And that's going to be fun because Ubisoft has some stuff that we would like them to show. Who knows? Maybe they're working with Nintendo on something else after uh, Mario Rabbids did so well. But we also hear about rumblings of things like Splinter Cell we saw Beyond Good and Evil 2 last year. And we're hoping that they show us the game more so with gameplay and everything and hopefully give us a release date, maybe? I mean, who knows at this point? Division 2 has been revealed. And, of course, there's going to be stuff that we don't know about. Hopefully Splinter Cell uh, that they will also have to show us. Now, we found out as well that Microsoft's event is also happening except on Sunday. Now, they shared this over at the news section of Xbox.com, letting us know Sunday, June 10th, 1 p.m. Pacific time, they will have their full E3 briefing. So we're going to get kind of what we got last year, where it was separate building and everything. They, you know, they drove a little Porsche up and everything. It's going to be talked about Forza at some point, so they probably have another car there, maybe. Um, and then they'll also be doing Fan Fest as well, and they'll have live streaming going on throughout the week. So this is going to be really fun. Um, I'm hoping Microsoft has a lot to show, because they need to show a lot. Hopefully Halo 6 is there, Forza, maybe Fable gets hinted at, and then just some new stuff we haven't thought about. People are also talking about Perfect Dark. Really? Microsoft could kind of blow the doors off the place if they show up with games. We have the hardware that can play the games well. It's, it's the best console on the market right now in terms of quality and power. So give us stuff to play on it. Give us some new games that are not third party for the PlayStation. Yeah, sure, you'll put it on PC, but give console fans something to play on their console and I think they'll be okay. I'd like to think they're just gonna show rapid fire games left and right. They won't be doing things like talking about this ultra powerful system that's not out yet. And uh, we'll see, we'll see if they can fill that, that, uh, that really that building that they have up and uh, hopefully it's just a lot of games. Next up, let's talk about Media Create sales charts over in Japan. This one was interesting because remember last week we talked about the PlayStation kind of dropping down to an oddly, really just a low level for units sold that week and it happened to go further. Like it's actually lower now, more so, and it's actually getting into like a very odd territory that I don't really remember ever seeing for the PlayStation. So let's take a look at the charts. We're gonna start with the top 10 games as usual. So we take a look at there, starting with The Snack World. This is actually on Nintendo Switch. Uh, that did 35,655, it's pretty good there. Kirby Star Allies is gonna remain, like I said, around in the top, probably four, top five for quite a while. That did another 23,695. That is coming up on half a million units sold physically in Japan, which is pretty good. Splatoon 2, which I've told you guys is never going away from that top five. It's always kind of going to be in there. The only way it'll get pushed down is if a ton of big games come out. But that's now crossed over 2.2 million. So it's, it's getting up to that 2.5 million coming up. Uh, Death End debuting there at number 4, 15,303. Far Cry 5, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, City Skylines debuting there uh, at the seventh spot for the PS4, 11,366. Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and then we have Super Robot Wars X on the PS4, rounding out the top 10. Number 11, by the way, was Nino Kuni 2. So it is at least still hanging on in the top 15 or so. Jumping over to hardware, you will see that most were down. So both the Switch and the PS4 were technically down from the week prior, even from last year, but the PS4 is down heavily from last year. Let's start with the Switch, 36,308. That is down, like I said, from 40,000 or so, and then last year, this week, 45,673. You're also going to notice that year-to-date, this year, the Switch has passed back uh, the PS4, so the Switch year-to-date is 760,000, whereas the PS4 is now at 745,000, so the Switch will, I guess, it will probably just start running away from the PS4 going forward here, but the PS4 dropped down to 10,964, just under 11,000. That's last week was 14,500. Last year this time, though, 21,922. We're starting to see a bit of a decline with the PS4 in Japan. 3DS, 8,546, also down. Like, like I said, most stuff was down. Uh, the Vita actually held pretty much solid within margin of error, 2,921 from last week's 2,929. The Xbox One, uh, well, it, 72 units. It's, it's also down, but, uh, you know, it's the Xbox One in Japan. So what's going on with the PS4? You know, it, it's hard to say. I, I've told you guys before, I think the PS4 is getting close to that roof of how many it can sell in Japan, and I think it's, it's becoming kind of obvious. Now, we're going to see what kind of effect God of War has on the sales charts here next week when we get uh, this past this week uh, kind of reported. God of War is not a massive seller in Japan, though. 
It's not. It's a massive seller in Europe. It's a massive seller in the U.S. Those are places I expect to be affected by God of War. If the, the PlayStation should, no questions asked, take the NPD in April. Not a problem, right? But places like Japan are a little concerning. We're going to see, listen, PlayStation 4 should be back up next week with God of War. But after God of War, I don't really know what else is really going to push sales currently. Maybe more stuff at E3 will start to show up. I can think of maybe Shenmue 1 and 2, right? And then Shenmue 3 at some point. And then Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts will definitely pick the PS4 up. But are we getting to a point where the PS4, it's reaching its roof in Japan? I think that is a distinct possibility. Whereas the Switch, obviously just getting started. The Xbox has just tapered off. Although the Xbox is coming up on 100,000 units sold in Japan. I mean, that's actually a big accomplishment, believe it or not, for the Xbox One. Uh, but much like things like the 3DS, which is obviously being overrun by the, the Switch at this point, the PS4 is reaching that roof. It's not really surprising that we're hearing uh, Sony's uh, Mark Cerny kind of go on the road looking to see what people want for the PS5. Because while we're not going to shift there this year, maybe even not next year, uh, the thought is probably there on their side that as PS4 sales start to decline, they introduce something new to, to start sales back up again. Next up, let's talk about Battlefield V or Battlefield 5. It's the next Battlefield. We know one is coming. We're going to probably see all about it at E3 with uh, EA Access and everything. It sounds like they're going to be going to World War II. Great. Uh, it sounds, sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. And it sounds like it's going to have a single player. In fact, according to VentureBeat, as you're seeing here, uh, they're, they're ecstatic. They think because Call of Duty is not going to have that single player experience, people who like the single player in these type of games will instead migrate over to Battlefield V or Battlefield 5. I'm just going to call it Battlefield 5. Uh, Battlefield 5, they think there's going to migrate over and they might have a point. In fact, according to VentureBeat, people within the organization, EA developers and everything, they're ecstatic, ecstatic that Call of Duty is leaving the single player out. Because, of course, that could open the door and their game more than likely will offer more content as it appears to be having a full-fledged cinematic story and it will also have a massive multiplayer, really, online experience. So it seems like you're going to get more for your money when it comes to something like Battlefield, especially if you're more of a history buff and you enjoy things like World War I, World War II and stuff. I mean, Battlefield 1 did well. This one, Battlefield 5, this, this could be it for Battlefield finally finally overtaking the massive Call of Duty, you know, that, that they are. Call of Duty always, always wins in the fall holidays, but this might be the year Battlefield does it. Also, why not? Apparently, according to VentureBeat with another rumor from people within the organization, they're testing a Battle Royale mode. Why not, right? Call of Duty has it. Battlefield will have it. It, it. It's akin to, of course, Fortnite and PUBG as they described it. So 100 people drop in, last person standing wins. And I guess they can kind of play around with it in the World War II setting. But uh, it, it's so funny to watch these big companies jump on the fads that take place, right? Zombies were, were really bad back in the day. And now we have Battle Royale. So uh, sure, why not? That, that That's happening, apparently. Um, I You know... It's possible that with the budgets that these companies have, they could probably further the Battle Royale game, but it's it's just so funny to see everyone just jump on board when a fad is discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for News Wave today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave a bunch of comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, getting loot boxes. Did it surprise you? Are you frustrated? Are you annoyed? Maybe you can't picture Nintendo with loot boxes. Well, they've had them since Fire Emblem Heroes, so there you go. It's not really that new. It's just it has now a form of a, uh, of a fortune cookie, so that people didn't like that, I guess. Also, of course, let me know what you think about E3, Battlefield 5. Do you think Battlefield 5 now has a chance against Call of Duty, since we're hearing that Call of Duty is going to uh, lack not really half the game, but at least a third of the game with the single player. Do you think that's kind of a mistake on their part? Battlefield kind of worked their way in there and uh, and take over. And I guess let me know what you think about the Battle Royale craze that seems to be hitting developers as everything is trying to be Battle, or battle Royale modes at this point. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you stop by later on tonight and have some stuff with Labo. We'll unbox it, check it out. It'll be a lot of fun, and I'll see you guys then.